Okay, so our lesson for today is basically still about locks. And for this, uh, let me download the PowerPoint presentation that we do have for our module. Okay. Okay, and for module three, uh, as uh, what as what I have said, no, uh, we are still in locks. And for our objective for this afternoon, is that we would like to understand and apply the following locks in C plus plus. However, as what you can see here, we have the try lock, and we did this already in our past lecture. If you can still remember when we used a mutex, uh, what we did there is we tried to execute a try lock so that our thread would not be waiting, but instead it will it would be processing for something else, okay, and it would still continue to function. And ito yung example na pinakita ko sa inyo last time, wherein uh, if the if we were not able to get the lock okay uh we will continue with our processing and decrement uh i inside the loop so that it will return to its uh, original state okay but before discussing about reentrant lock and read write lock i would like to continue uh on our discussion with how to make uh, threads communicate with one another, okay? Because this is very important. And for me to show you this, uh, let me open uh, our compiler, okay? And let me create a new source code file for this one. So we have here include IO stream, okay? And using namespace std, okay? Then we have the main function. And then we have return zero. Now, I will save this file as module 3. Okay. And let's now try to consider our previous example about this uh, producer and consumer uh, problem, okay, or the consumer, uh, producer consumer pattern. Let's say we have a global variable dito sa program natin. And if you can still remember, uh, we have this uh, function where we wanted to create a thread, which is producer, okay. And what we wanted to do here is we wanted to create a uh, endless thread, okay? So we could just say while true. And what it does is it simply increments counter by one, okay? And yeah, let's try to display the value of counter. So we have here, uh, yeah, the value of counter. And there you go. And so, uh, if we uh, want to create also a consumer, it has the same logic. However, so I'll just copy on it and I'll work on the consumer. And then I'll simply subtract one from, from the counter that we have. Okay, and I can now create a thread. So, with this, let me create a thread for T1, okay? And that is thread1, and I'll name it uh, as the producer, or I'll make thread1 as the producer. And possibly, just wait for the producer to finish, okay? And I will be running now the program. Only the producer is running, 
no para mas maintindihan natin okay so we have oh i forgot so i have here uh, include thread and and let me run the program again and that's what you can see the counter keeps on uh, incrementing okay now sometimes we wanted our thread to be controlled something like um it's a bounded buffer like it can only produce up to 10000 tapos after 10000 we wanted it to stop already somehow but not totally stop we wanted it to wait first parang ganon. no no teka wag ka munang ano uh, mag-add ng 10000 Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, mag-add ng 10,000. Huwag ka muna mag-add ng 1 because our buffer is full and uh, 10,000 is our limit. Okay? And as well, if for example, if I'll be running no, our thread as a consumer, okay, notice that we do not want to subtract from the counter if it's negative already or we don't have anything to consume. And if the counter reaches zero, okay, uh, of course, we wanted to tell the consumer thread that we have na, oops, teka lang, no? Wala na tayong makukuhang value because it's zero, it's zero already. And the thing here is that how can we control these things? That is what we wanted to do in this example. So let's say, for example, no, I'll try to run thread one as the consumer, okay, and I'll be running thread two as the producer, okay. So we have here the producer natin, and and syempre, meron din tayong t two that join, Ayan. okay. So we have here t two that join, and let me run the program. So, ayan, no? Although, of course, we know that uh, this solution has a risk condition. Okay? Because we are continuously writing on our shared resource, which is the counter. So, hindi talaga precise to, no? Na talagang yung values natin is okay. So, nakikita natin na nag-negative na and it might be possible na, yeah, it's going positive already. No, but then again, the values here are not precise. I just wanted to for you uh, class to know na what we wanted to achieve here. And so, no, when we are working, when we wanted to uh, control or communicate threads with one another, okay, we have this special uh, feature in terms of threads which is what we call the condition variable okay and we have to include that yung condition variable we have the condition variable okay and for the condition variable to work of course it need it needs lock so we have to include a mutex okay so let's try to include a mutex in our program. And so we wanted to declare something, no? Such as the maximum bound of our uh, counter, which is up to 10,000 only. Okay? Then for us to, you know, control the locks, siempre we wanted to control it so that it has no risk condition. Then we have to declare a mutex. Okay? And we wanted to the threads to communicate with one another. So this is a, uh, the new topic that I wanted to present, which is the condition variable. And let us name it as CV. Okay? So condition variable CV. Ayan. Okay? And how do we control or how do we use this? Well, siempre, when we are working with the producer, okay, we wanted to secure first the critical section of our code. 
Okay? So, uh, like for example, no? Uh, we wanted to check, okay, if our counter is equal to the maximum value already. Okay? And syempre, no? Uh, if if it's equal to the maximum value already, which is 10,000, okay, we wanted to say that, you know, uh, we we wanted to halt the, the producer. Okay, so, ayaw na nating mag-add siya. And that's why, we, using the conditional variable, okay, we will execute this command wait. If you can, if you notice class in Java, you have this object and sa object class, merong wait method na tinatawag. It's the same concept that you have in Java. Okay? And for condition variable to work, okay, you need a lock for it. Okay? So, anong lock yung gagamitin niya? Eh, syempre, we wanted to control the the critical section. So, for condition variables to lock, we need a uh, new lock here. Okay? So, if you can still remember yung lock guard before, it automatically unlocks, di ba? And for condition variable to work, you have this what we call unique lock. Okay? Which also uses the mutex. Okay? And we have the unique lock. Okay, which uses the variable mutex that we have created. So, automatically, uh, when we have this, okay, when we, uh, when we have this lock, we are actually having the counter for the use of this specific thread only. Okay, so walang ibang thread ang makakagalaw kasi we wanted to secure it para i-check natin yung value na aba 10,000 na ba siya. Okay? And so, no, if let's say for example, it's in maximum value already, okay? We will now issue a wait command. Okay? Oh, teka, we have to pause. So, yes, no? Uh, we will be using the unique lock that we created and we have to wait. Okay? And that's what we wanted to do. Otherwise, syempre, no, we want, while the we are still locked, if, let's say, hindi pa siya maximum, no, we wanted to increase the value of counter. And so, this is what we have done. No? We wanted to increase the the counter. And we wanted to perform, syempre, if we are done incrementing it, no, then we have to say that we have to unlock already so that other threads can use the counter. Para si consumer, pwede rin siya mag-minus-minus, di ba? And so that's basically what we wanted to do here, okay? And so look, no? Let me compile if there are any errors in this program. Okay, so it seems fine. And what I wanted to do here, let me just uh, activate only the producer. Okay, so we started at zero. And let's now try to run our program. Okay, so subukan natin. And it's running 8, 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So, yeah. So, we were sec successful in doing it. No? We were able to halt or wait, to make the thread wait, when our value was 10,000. But the problem arises here. No? Once na... We have a thread that is waiting. A different thread, okay, not this thread, okay, should notify this thread that it's okay to proceed. So, kailangan, class, eto, parang nakatulog siya eh. Kailangan may gigising para sa kanya, okay? 
Otherwise, forever na siyang waiting. Kasi walang magsasabi sa kanya na you are ready again to proceed. No? And sinong gagawa nun? Okay? And that is basically the consumer. Okay? Siya dapat, dapat different thread ang gigising. Okay? Dep- depending on the logic that you have, pwede rin si Maine ang gumising sa kanya. Okay? But, Our concentration is really more on the producer and consumer. Okay? And so, with that, no? Uh, since we have the same logic as with the consumer, okay? So, what I'll just do here is I'll just try to copy no? the, the logic of the producer. Okay? I'll just try to copy and rename this as consumer. Okay, so i rename ko lang siya as consumer. And once I rename this as consumer, syempre I wanted to check if, you know, the counter is equal to zero. And yes, we have a unique lock also. Okay, because we are using a condition variable. And meron tayo consumer waiting. But instead of uh, counter plus plus, I'll be using counter minus minus. And I have to unlock again. Okay? So this time, I'm going to test consumer. Okay? So I'm going to comment out and wait for consumer to finish. Ayan. And syempre, let's say for example, we started at 10,000. Okay? So we are just trying to simulate na kunwari 10,000 no? and the thread is actually, the consumer thread is the only one that is uh, rotting. Or perhaps, siya ang mas madalas na tumatakbo dito sa program natin. And when I run this program, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bang. Okay. So, sakto, no? We are, we achieve what we wanted. We were able to hold consumer. But the thing is, it's still waiting. Okay? It's still waiting. And walang gigising sa kanya. Okay? Unless there is another thread that will uh, wake the producer up. No? Or wait, wake the consumer. And so, yun yung ilalagay natin class dito. That, If we were successful in adding, no, ibig sabihin, we were successful in adding the counter. Ibig sabihin, syempre, hindi pa siya in maximum, right? And we, after we have unlocked it, we have to say, okay, our condition variable, okay, to notify all. Okay? Ayan. We wanted it to notify all na, uy, nakapag-add na ako sa counter. So, most probably, ikaw, consumer, you can subtract from it again dahil hindi na siya zero. Okay? And as well, yung gigising sa producer natin, okay, after unlocking, uy, hindi na yan 10,000 because nakapag-minus-minus na ako. And yes, you can... You can continue. Okay? And so, with that, no, let me bring this back to zero. Okay? And I can now let thread 1 and thread 2 to run simultaneously. Okay? So, tingnan natin. So, let me run. No? And, pe, teka, pa, paano ba natin malalaman? So, we could, we could have a thread ID here no? para ma-print lang natin. And we have this uh, thread, then get ID. Para print lang natin yung ano. And we do the same also for the for the consumer. Okay, para makita lang natin na uh, it's a different thread, no? And let me compile and run the program. Ayun. So it started and makikita nyo, no, na lumalaban sila naglalabanan yung dalawa no and you would see here uh, somewhere i think i saw ayun ay, no uh, i think i saw somewhere no 
a consumer is waiting. But, yan, malapit na siguro. But, I think I, I lost it. Ayun. Yeah. Uh, Natsatsambahan ko siya. Yan, no? Consumer waiting kasi nag-zero na siya, di ba? And look, nag-increase na ulit. Okay? Now, para mas makita natin, no? Uh, let me increase the number of threads. So, meaning, uh, I'll increase the number of producers to T2, 3, and 4. So, we have 4 producers. Ibig sabihin, mas marami nang nag a ngayon. Okay? So, since mas marami ang nag a -add, okay, we have T1, T2, T3, and T4. Ayan, no? Since mara mas marami ang nag a dapat, ang lalabas niyan, mas maraming producer that is waiting. Okay? Kasi, most probably, maaabot agad natin yung 10,000 eh. Kasi apat silang nagka-counter plus plus. So, let's go. Ayan. So, yan. 1, 2, so nananalo. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ayan, no? So, makikita nyo. Ah, uh, hindi ko lang ma... Ayan, ups, you no? So, producer waiting. We have uh, thread 4, thread 3, nakita ko. No? Uh, hindi ko lang siya matsyambahan na sa scroll bar. But, yeah, you can see that, no? Ayan, 5 and 3, producer is waiting. Okay? And so, that's how we let... Uh, tawag dito? Yung... Threads communicate with one another. And let me show you sa paint, no? Para mas maintindihan nyo. Okay? So, this is our counter variable. Okay? And technically, we have consumer uh, na isa lang. And we do have uh, something like, yeah, so we have four threads or three threads of producer. So basically, all of them are manipulating the counter variables. Okay, so counter variables, counter variables. And let's say, for example, even let's say we, we tried to add a consumer here. Yan, kahit tatlong consumer yan, tatlong producer uh, trying to, you know, uh, modify the variable counter. There's a possibility na there would come a time that when this producer checks the counter, okay, this is waiting. This is waiting. And this is waiting also. Okay? Lalo na mangyayari yan, let's say for example, if uh, we have only one consumer. Okay? So most probably, pwedeng lahat sila sabay-sabay na producer na na nasa waiting state. And you know, class, when we are on the waiting state, operating system ang nag-handle na niyan, no? Ngayon, when, when the consumer, of course, they are all in the waiting state. When the consumer signals, okay, when the consumer signals notify all, it is informing the operating system to notify all waiting threads. Okay? So, lahat sila sinasabihan na okay na. Hindi yung iisa lang. But you can do that also using the notify command only. Okay? But we wanted everyone to be fair. Okay? And when we say notify all, we do not know kung sino ang unang gigising sa kanila because it's being handled by the operating system, by the process management of the OS. Okay? So, lahat sila sinasabihan. And vice versa. Okay? All that is connected to that conditional variable, even the, even, no? Even yung consumer that is waiting, kahit si mismong consumer ang nagsaming, ang nagsabing notify all, lahat sila mai-inform. Even the uh, consumer that is waiting and lahat sila gigising, mag-uunahan ulit sa pagkuha ng lock to check on the counter variable. Okay? And in that way, 
kaya notify all ang ginawa natin para maiwasan natin ang deadlock. Okay? Eh what if kung notify lang ginawa natin, isang thread lang yung magigising? Eh kung natsambahan na consumer din yun. Okay? Dahil natutulog din yung ibang consumer, something like that. Eh paano naman yung producer hindi na nagising? And so, we would be having a deadlock also. So, to decrease that risk of having the threads to be on a deadlock, we said that we will be notifying all of them to proceed again. Okay? So, yan. No? And that is how we, you know, tame our threads. That is how we control our threads. As what I have said, when we are working with, you know, concurrency. As what you can see, the concurrency syntax is so simple. Okay? However, it's just that we have to deal with these nitty-gritty details of coordinating with them. Like the race condition, the use of locks, no? And etc. So, ganun talaga, no? Ganun ang nangyayari when we have to coordinate uh, these things, okay? So, I do hope that you understand already how do we communicate between threads using condition variables. And this is actually posted already, no? In your, tawag dito, in your canvas account. Okay? So, moving forward, class, no? Going to our discussion, and we, we know uh, condition variables already. Let's now try to study about this reentrant lock. And you know what reentrant is, no? Uh, because there may be times when a program needs to lock a mutex multiple times, yes, no, before unlocking it. So in that case, you should use a reentrant mutex to prevent this type of problem. Okay? Kasi sometimes class lalong-lalo na no when you are working. No, when you are working with a recursive routine. Eh lalong-lalo na, 'di ba? Lalong-lalo na when in some in most of the algorithmic uh implementation recursion talaga ginagamit and you wanted them to be performing in concurrently and parallel. No, so for you to be able to help out, no, in terms of processing. But the the thing here is that we might end up on a deadlock, okay. And so, for this, if your program needs to lock a certain thread multiple times, no, using a reentrant mutex may seem like an easy way to avoid this deadlock. But let's say, for example, if, kasi minsan pumapalya din ang recursion eh, no? If you were not able to unlock a reentrant lock, no? Recursively, the same number of times also you called the function, well, you can still end up being stuck, no? And the thing here is that when we use a reentrant mutex, it keeps track of how many times it's been locked by the owning thread. Okay, so let me show you this simple uh, understanding of a reentrant lock. In C++, ang tawag lang dito is recursive mutex. Okay? However, syempre, in, uh, to make the our literature no, applicable also to others and to other platforms, reentrant lock ang term natin. No? And how do we use this? Oh, let's try to to remove our code here, no? And uh, remove the thread that we actually created. So, uh, isang thread lang muna, no, para maintindihan natin. Okay? Well, we don't need the condition variable, no? Hindi natin kailangan 'yan. Ayan. Okay. Let's say for example, we have a sample program here. So, void and then sample. Ayan. And then dito sa void sample natin, we wanted this to be a recursive routine. So, meron tayong integer n dito. 
Okay? And syempre, we have if n is equal to 0, no? we would like to uh, somehow return already from a recursive call. And um, eh, if not, no? uh, what we wanted here is to just print out the number. Ganun lang kasimple. Okay, oops. You wanted, oh, what happened? Ayan. We wanted to print out the number. Ayan. And after printing it out, we have a sample n minus 1. So, technically, this prints the number no, in decreasing manner. And, yeah, no? So, maybe uh, what we can do here is maybe we get to test this one. So, we have here a sample. Gawa tayo ng sample. And let's now run the program. Oops. I'm sorry about that. No? Ayan. And thread T1. So, we have thread. So, let's now try to... Uh, what do you call this? Have a value of 5 doon sa sample. Para sa thread natin. So, let me run the program. And we have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Diba? But we do not want any uh, race condition to happen. And so, uh, with this, sabi natin, uh, yeah, para hindi natin, ano, di tayo magkaroon ng race condition. Eh, might as well let's use a lock guard para automatic na nag a unlock no? and that's why nilagyan natin ng braces dito so we have a lock guard okay lock guard and uh, we wanted to use a mutex and a lock guard using the mutex m okay pero syempre we have to declare a mutex so you have a mutex m here, mutex m. And that's it, no? Kasi pag nag out of scope yung lock guard natin, it will be automatically unlocked. And take a closer look. Saan lang siya mag a unlock pag natapos na yung sample, di ba? Okay. Pero tingnan niyo, iikot tayo ulit, di ba? Sige, check natin. So let me run the program. And as what you can see, we are already on a deadlock. It's because pagpasok nung number 5, nakakuha na siya ng lock. Uma pumasok ulit si sample n-1. Eh, nakuha na yung lock eh ng unang recursive thread natin. So, hindi na siya pinapayagan. That's the problem, class. When you don't have any reentrant locks. Okay? So, it's possible that when you try to call a recursive function again, eh, it's possible na talagang magde-deadlock ka na nga. And so, a re-entrant lock in C++ is what you call a recursive mutex. Ayan. Okay? But of course, you have to say that you, you will be needing a recursive mutex not a mutex only. Okay, so let me compile the program. Ayan, so it runs, it compiled with no problems. And yeah, let me just run it. And as what you can see, we were able to complete yung recursive call natin, which is 5, I'm sorry, which is 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. It's because uh, we were allowed to reuse the same lock you know, for, for this thread only, okay? For, for our particular thread, okay? And this recursive mutex is keeping track on how many times we did the recursive call automatically for us. And every time that this recursive function is terminating, it unlocks itself. Okay? And so, if it just so happened that before terminating, no, before the lock guard would finish somewhere here, naghang yung recursive call natin, well, 
it will not be unlocked anymore. No? Kaya, it's, it, this is still uh, not a fail-safe na tinatawag natin. No? But still, we have a higher chance of reusing the re -end, the hour lock again in terms of if we have a recursive call. Okay? And that is basically class, the purpose of a re-entrant lock. And I hope you did get the idea of using re-entrant locks in your program. Okay? And so, many programmers like using uh, likes using re-entrant locks because it can make things easier. You don't have any change, any changes in your recursive function because it allows you to to recurse again. No? And you don't need to worry as much about what's already been locked. Okay? And as what we have said, kung may existing code ka that is a recursive in nature, you don't need to change the logic. No? You only need to retrofit the locks in, in that particular type of code. Okay? And just to give you an idea of how the reentrant lock works. So consider this increment counter, which has lock and unlock. No, because we do not want to share the counter. We wanted to own it if we are trying to modify counter. And we will be using this inside the my function routine. No, this is much like a recursive call. So we have lock and unlock here also because there are some parts here that we wanted to own also. And so how many times we have lock? No, it should also be how many times we should unlock and that's what we meant by by using a reentrant lock okay so yun class no uh yes so i have uh, shown you no uh, a better example so pros and cons okay so a use case is a recursive function that calls itself no and yes different languages use different terms but this all basically mean the same thing. Recursive mutex, the entrant lock. Kasi sometimes sa ibang programming language, no, medyo iba yung ano, tawag nila. Now, I'll be skipping this trial lock. You might want to revisit yung last uh, lecture that we have here, no, about the trial lock. And syempre, if the mutex we were trying to lock is unavailable, then the purpose of this is we might want to proceed rather than you know waiting for our lock no to be freed okay yeah so moving forward let me discuss with you about this read write lock okay etong ano kasi class etong uh, read write lock or reader writer clock sometimes kasi Alam naman natin yung patterns ng threads. May mga threads na gusto lang naman nila magbasa ng value. May mga threads na gusto nilang magpalit doon sa value. Okay? So, syempre, pag gusto lang naman nila basahin and wala namang magra-write doon sa, let's say, counter natin. ba? Eh, why not we allow the reader to proceed? Bakit pa natin sila hahayaan na, you know, magintay no So, in terms of program efficiency, wala namang mangyayari. Kasi hindi naman natin binago yung value. Sige na, hayaan na natin to. No? Hayaan na natin silang makapasok at mabasa yung, yung value na meron tayo. And that is the purpose of the read-write lock. Because you wanted to share your lock depending on, you know, on the purpose. Okay, and so this is the most efficient way to do things, which is the reader writer lock. And let me show you how it is done. No, and with this, since you know we wanted our locks to be to be shared, okay, with different readers, then we need a new uh, header file here, which is a shared mutex. Yun nga lang, class, this shared mutex will only work on C++ 14 and above. Okay? 
And that's why I highly recommend using Visual Studio Code onwards para gumana. And take a closer look on the version of DevC++ that I am using. It's 10.3. The original one is 4.9. Ang layo, di ba? No? And this is 10.3 class, which supports up to version C++ 20 plus 23. Okay, kaya ito ang gamit ko. And look on how I configured my compiler option here. Minus STD, which is equal to C++ 17. Okay? Kasi dito sa code generation, no, wala hanggang 11 lang to. Kasi nga luma na tong DevC eh. But I believe, syempre, this, the interface is so simple, mas magaan sa memory kasi ang Dev C++. That's why, you know, we continue to love it. But syempre, like yung mga code completion, wala masyado dito, di ba? So let me, yeah, let me just, you know, uh, share this with you about this uh, shared mutex. And with this, it's not a recursive mutex, but a shared mutex M. Okay? And let me have this simple program here. Ayan. Ang gusto natin, we have a reader thread. Ayan. So, sa reader thread natin, class, uh, well, what we can do here is, syempre, we could just have a, a endless uh, thread. No? Na, let's write true. And what it does is that it simply reads no yung yung value natin na what we wanted here actually is yung ano eh we just wanted to read the counter no which we initialize to zero tapos si writer uh, mag add lang ng value sa counter natin and so we have a reader thread no ayan and uh, with a thread ID. No? Lagyan natin ng thread ID. So, we have the value of counter here. Tapos, maybe, uh, yeah, another our ID here. No? And we have this thread. Okay. Is, let's say, for example, yeah, this thread. And then, get. ID. Ayan. Di, syempre, we have end L for this one. Okay? So, yes. Ganyan siya. And, yan, no? And since parehas naman tayo ng logic with the writer, what I'll be doing here is, yeah, uh, I'll just have this uh, copied. No? So, para siyang producer and consumer, pero, the concept is different. We have a writer here. Ayan, meron tayong writer dito. And we have the writer thread. Writer thread. And we have counter, of course. Uh, what we are doing here is we wanted to increase the value of counter. Okay, and yeah. no, Kasi writer, gusto natin na ano eh na ganun lang yung ginagawa niya, no? So, syempre, pag pumasok si writer, no, yung thread natin with writer, eh, gumagana na siya. We do not want readers to read the value yet, no? Kaya, that's why, in our example here, no, uh, we wanted to something like no create a unique lock okay we wanted to create a unique lock okay and using the shared mutex na ginawa natin so we have here a unique lock which is ul and using the shared mutex na ginawa natin ayan okay and syempre no since uh we have this okay uh what we wanted to do here is to scope the lock no 
And uh yeah, no, we wanted to scope the lock such that ayan, pag bago pumasok ng unique lock, nag-counter plus plus siya, no? And the thing here is we wanted okay, we wanted to ayan. So, yes, no? We wanted to have the thread no uh to sleep for something like maybe para mas noticeable uh, we wanted to sleep for 5000 milliseconds before doing uh doing the loop again no so let's try to test it out first class no para hindi naman mahirap mag debug sakaling ano sakaling may makita tayong errors and as what you can see ito yung gusto nating critical section kasi dito tayo nagka counter plus plus okay and bago mag loop ulit no bago siya mag loop ulit uh, it will sleep for 5000 milliseconds and let me just yan no uh, we have a writer here so t1 that join patakbuhin lang natin yung writer and yeah no? and uy so i have let's try to close so we have here ah bakit nga naman kasi may parameter ako yan and let me run the program so ayan writer thread 1 id is 2 that's the counter value and after 5 seconds dagdagan na lang natin ng space because we don't have any space. Yeah. Okay. So let me run the program. Writer thread 1. That's the counter value. And the ID of the thread is 2. So siya lang naman, di ba? Mag-isa yung gumagana. Siya lang mag-isa. Okay? And then after 5 seconds, gumagana siya. And yeah, it looks like the writer is working. Because every 5, 000, uh, five second interval, uh, gumagana naman yung writer natin. Okay? Uh, and so, what we wanted here is we wanted the reader ano, to to read the counter habang hindi pa nag-write. No? Yun ang gusto natin. Okay? That's why, in this area, pagtapos sa time mag-write, we are freeing it already. Ayan, no? Ma-out of scope na yung unique lock. We are freeing it already. And bago ulit, umikot, 5, five seconds. Okay? And so, so, para hindi rin magkataon na habang binabasa natin, eh, alam nyo yun, biglang pumalo si reader. We need to lock also the counter here. No? Kailangan din naman natin, syempre, ng ilock yung reader natin kasi baka biglang pumalo si writer binabasa pa natin eh and since this is shared unlike the writer na napapansin niyo which is unique lock ang gagamitin natin dito shared lock okay using the shared mutex okay ayan using the shared mutex and you have the shared lock and this is a member of yan M, no? Mutex. So member tayo niyan ng Mutex na yan. And yes, we have that already. And eto no? After we have read it, oh, sumobra. After we have read the variable which is the reader thread, igsian natin, no? Na we will be looping again, no? So eto naman we would like to slip this thread for 1,000 milliseconds or one second. Ano? So, ayan. So, we have here oh, sleep 4. I'm sorry. That should be sleep 4. Ayan. So, we have 1,000 milliseconds. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin, di ba, maraming pwedeng mag-read. Kasi one, ano eh, 1,000 milliseconds lang. So, read siya ng read. Kaya tingnan niyo mangyayari. We have one writer. 
Okay, and then let's say for example, let's try to establish three readers. Okay, mag-establish tayo ng reader. Ayan. So, reader, reader, reader. Reader, reader, reader. That's T3 and T4. Tatlo yung reader natin. Then, we have T1, T2, T3. T1, T2, and T3. Then, we also have T4. Ayan, no? And before returning our program, and let's see, we will be launching them. Read that long reader, isang writer, and let's see what will happen. Oh. Yeah. So as what you can see, oh, yeah, no, yung reader natin, no, sabay sabay sila, na babasa nila. And look, pare parehas ng value yung basa nila. Okay. So nag increment na si writer, but still yung reader natin na iba iba, no, makikita nyo. Isa lang ang basa nila and we are allowing them no to simul to simultaneously access the counter because it is a shared lock. Pero pag pumalo na si writer, okay, hindi na makakapasok ang mga reader. Okay? Kahit ba sabihin natin class no na we have two writers. Okay? So magdadagdag ako ng isa. It's still the same. No? Kahit dalawa ang writer natin, and we have uh, T5 that join, okay? If one, one writer is active and dalak sa kanya, hindi gagana yung pangalawang writer. Kaya wala kang makikita na parehas na value na writer. Sa reader, yes, magkakaroon ka ng parehas na value, no? Pero sa writer class, wala. Okay? So, look, look oh, writer 3, 4. O, oh, yan, reader, pare-pareho. Or writer, okay, uh, five six, or oh, diba? So we we can still secure, kahit na pare parehas sila, no? Nang mutex, okay? And so class, no, when we are working with this, no, I do hope, no, with this uh, different uh, locks that you could use, you have a variety of option on how you could perform concurrency in your program and i hope you did learn something for this lesson okay so yes no and that is all